so trigonometric equations and in equations trigonometric equations and and in equations okay so we are not we are not only going to talk about equations but we are also going to talk about in equations as you already know in equations are nothing but uh, inequalities involving variables right so how to solve trigonometric equations and in equations is what we are going to learn in this chapter okay so uh, in order to explain uh, this concept in order to start with this uh, topic i would ask you a very simple question okay let us say there is a variable x and sin of that variable x is half okay just a simple question sin x is equal to half x is a variable now what do you think are the possible values of x uh, if if possible please give me a response in radians okay don't give it in degrees so what are the possible values of x that satisfy this equation acha by the way are there just one or two values or there are many values what do you think let's answer that question first are there one or two values or there could be many values there are many values right why why there are many values why do you think uh, this equation will have many values right now please understand the trigonometric equations are different from the equations that you normally see in algebra or maybe let's say if you if you have solved you know uh, equations involving polynomials or let's say transcendental functions earlier any equation that you have seen before would have limited number of solutions of course unless until it's an identity identity is having infinitely many solutions in fact it is you know uh, true for all the values of the variable right so trigonometric equations are slightly different in the sense that they are periodic functions okay so by the virtue of the fact that all trigonometric functions are periodic okay periodic means they repeat themselves after a certain fixed change in the value of the variable right so sin x is one uh, function which is periodic with a period of 2 pi correct cos x is also periodic with 2 pi in fact cos x and sec x they are also periodic with 2 pi and tan x and cot x they are periodic with pi each okay if you want i can write them down for for you so let me just list down function and their period period is something which you will be talking in more details in class 12 under the function chapter so all the six trigonometric functions whether it is sin or cos or cosec or sec or tan or cot they have all been known to be periodic periodic with a period as mentioned 2 pi 2 pi 2 pi 2 pi pi and pi that means let's say tan of a particular value is k even if you change that value to you know that value plus pi or minus pi the answer of that will still be k okay so that is the meaning of periodicity so periodicity everybody knows that even if you change your x by x plus t it is going to give you the same value of the function back okay so this t here is called the period of the function we will talk more in details of it okay when we go to class 12th under the functions topic so the problem with this trigonometric equation is because they are periodic there will be infinitely many solutions possible but nevertheless it doesn't make them identity don't worry identity is where it is going to be satisfied for all the values of the variable provided that function is a defined one but despite not being an identity also there would be infinitely many answers possible to such an equation and that is because these functions are known to be periodic so let me show this scenario on a on a graph so sin x graph if you all recall looks like this okay it's a sinusoidal graph i'm just drawing few branches of it 
Okay, so this is your sinusoidal graph, correct? Okay, so this goes and on and on on both directions. Fine. This is the graph of sine x versus x. Okay. Now, when you're trying to solve sine x equal to half, basically you're trying to see. Basically, you're trying to see what are the what are the possible values of x for which this line, which is your y equal to half line, okay, intersects the sine x graph, right? Solving an equation is what? Solving an equation is trying to see. Solving this is basically trying to see where does sine x graph intersect intersect y equal to half graph isn't it that's the meaning of solving this equation so sin x graph is this white graph sinusoidal graph and half is y equal to half line that's a line which is horizontal parallel to the x axis so these are the places which i am showing with yellow these are the places where the intersection of the yellow uh, sorry the white graph of sin x and the blue line of y equal to half happens okay and there are many uh, many such points which will be existing right so we will have infinitely many answers for this type of question so because there are infinitely many types of answers or solutions to this question we normally divide the solutions into two categories one is what we call as so solutions will be divided under two categories one what we call as the principal solution okay principal solution and other is what we call as the general solution okay please note this down principal solutions i should write okay what is principal solutions all solutions that belong to zero to pi interval 0 to 2 pi interval including 0 but excluding 2 pi now in many books i have seen in many books i have seen they have written it as 0 to 2 pi including 2 pi but please note that uh, 2 pi will not be included it is 0 to 2 pi including 0 but not 2 pi so all the solutions that belong to this interval those solutions will be called as the principal solution okay for example, in our case, sin x equal to half. Can you tell me what are the angles possible between 0 to 2 pi, excluding 2 pi, for which sin x becomes half? You'll say, sir, 30 degree. Correct? I hope everybody is aware. So, 30 degree. So, in our example, in our example, sin x equal to half, the possible value of principal solutions would be x equal to pi by 6, which is 30 degree. I'm using radians to express the uh, solutions. Then 5 pi by 6. Okay, these are the only two angles. So these two angles will be called as the principal solutions. Okay, so many a times when you read the question also, they will categorically ask you for principal solutions, right? Now, what is this general solution? As the name itself says, th this will be a, you can say, a formula or a pattern which will try to give you all possible solutions for that trigonometric equation, right? Because these functions are periodic, they have so many solutions. So if I write a single standalone formula by which you can generate all possible solutions, which, are, which will be infinitely many in number, then that formula would be called as the general solution, right? So it's nothing but a pattern which represents or a formula or a rule by which you can find all your solutions to this equation. Now, this is something which is slightly difficult and challenging. So we will learn this in this, uh, you know, our chapter of trigonometric equations. Meanwhile, let us do this general solution finding for our given example, sin x equal to half. Okay. Now, all of you, please contribute to this. Let it not be a monologue. Please start listing the angles for which sin x is equal to half let's let's do this exercise here okay now start giving me all possible values of x for which sin x becomes half of course pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6 is already there uh can i write 5 pi by 6 like this 
I hope that doesn't uh, disturb somebody's understanding here, anybody's understanding here. Okay. Harshita, I'll come to your answer. Okay. What is the next value? Think and tell me sine x becomes half for what all values of the angle x? Pi by 6, that is 30 degree. I'm sorry. Yeah, 30 degree. And 5 pi by 6, I have already mentioned. So whenever your angle comes to these positions, you'll start getting sine x equal to half. So see, 30 degree, I have already covered. Okay. Then uh, pi minus pi by 6, which is 150, I have already covered. Okay. Then I'll take complete round and come back to this position. Correct? Yes or no? Can I say this 2 pi plus pi by 6? Uh, no, 7 pi, 7 pi by 6 will not give you the answer slope because at 7 pi by 6, sine uh, will become negative because you are in the third quadrant. Okay. Yes. Yes, keep telling me. Keep telling me. Oh, okay, what is the next position? Next position is when you come here, that will be nothing but 3 pi minus pi by 6. Am I right? Are you, are you all with me? See, I started with pi by 6 then 5 5 by 6 then full circle and coming back to the same position here so you have to come keep coming to these two green lines position okay so now this angle is 2 pi plus pi by 6 and now that what i have shown you that will become 3 pi minus pi by 6 okay tell me the next one tell me the next one then i'll think then i will understand that your uh, you know your concept is clear okay next one is going to be 4 pi plus pi by 6 absolutely Correct, Arya. Okay. Next one, tell me. Next one, tell me. Write down, write down. Everybody write down in the chat box. Next one. Right. 5 pi minus pi by 6. Very good, Shivan, Venkat, Harshita. Okay. Next one. Next one. Next one. 6 pi plus pi by 6. Absolutely right. Okay. Now see everybody. I'll just write a dot, dot, dot. Are you able to see a pattern in this solution? Are you able to see a pattern in this solution? In fact, you can go actually back also. For example, this pi by 6, you can write it something like this. 0 pi plus pi by 6. And you can go back also. For example, you can have, you can have something like, yeah, minus 1 pi minus pi by 6. That is also, sorry. Minus 1 pi, yeah, minus 1 pi, minus pi by 6, okay? Yes, sir. Now, if you look at the way these angles have been written, there is a pattern hidden here. What is the pattern hidden here? All of you, please pay attention. Whenever the coefficient of pi is odd number, there is a minus sign coming over here. Are you observing that? See, odd number minus sign. Odd number minus sign. Odd number minus sign. And whenever there's an even number in front of pi, there is a plus sign. See, even number, plus sign. Even number, plus sign. Even number, plus sign. Right? Now, try to generalize this by a, by a formula. So can I say the formula that will suit this requirement is n pi plus minus 1 to the power n pi by 6. Right? Where n is an integer. Right? See, this is a very beautiful formula which actually takes care of this particular pattern that you are observing over here. So whenever n is odd, automatically minus 1 to the power odd number will become minus sign. So a minus sign will automatically feature. And if n is even, minus 1 to the power even number will become plus. Right? So automatically plus will come up. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. So this is the general solution for this equation that I was talking about. So as an example, okay, for sine x equal to half, the general solution, I'll be using GS for it going forward. The general solution will become x equal to n pi plus minus 1 to the power n pi by 6, where n is an integer. So this becomes your general solution for this question. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns anybody has? Please do let me know. Okay. 
So now it is clear what is the difference between the two types of solutions. By the way, general solution is a, you can say superset and principal solutions are those values from the general solution, which are under the interval zero to two pi excluding two pi. Is it clear? Any questions, any concerns? Okay. I'll be doing many such activities with you, especially related to the general solution. Okay. And of course, here and there, we will also talk about principal solution. And then towards the end of this exercise that I'll be doing with you, I'll be giving you some formulas to take away from this entire exercise. Okay. So some learnings that we will uh, do from this entire set of exercise, I'll give you some formulae. First note this down. And if you have any questions, do let me know. Any, anywhere you want to copy, do let me know. You can, you know, ask me to shift the screen anywhere. I'll, you know, more than happy to help you. Okay. Clear? Should we go to the next slide then? Should we move on to the next slide? Okay. Let's target another example. Sin X is equal to, uh, let me give you minus one by root two. Okay. Now my question to you is for this, let us find number one, the principal solution, the principal solution and number two, the general solution. Okay. So one more exercise on similar to the type one question or the first type of question. Okay, so let's first write down the principal solution. Everybody, please give me the answer to the principal solutions. Which angle between 0 to 2 pi will satisfy sin x equal to minus 1 by root 2? Okay, Harshita, very good. Slok, very good. Uh, so there is only one of the answers. There will be one more answer, Slok. Very good, Satyam. So sin x is negative. Are you, are you sure? Sin x is negative in the third quadrant and in the fourth quadrant, right? Because in the third and the fourth, uh, in the third only tan and cot can be positive. In the fourth, only cos and c can be positive, right? So think of an angle, a right slope, absolutely right. So think of an angle in the third quadrant and in the fourth quadrant for which, for which you will get sin x equal to one by root two with a negative sign. Negative sign means already you are in the third and the fourth. So just think about the magnitude. So now the magnitude here will be, please remember it will be pi plus pi by four, which is nothing but, which is nothing but five pi by four. And the other one will be, I'm just making a small one here. The other one will be this blue one. Okay. And that would be nothing but two pi minus pi by four. That's nothing but seven pi by four. So absolutely right. Those who said five pi by four solutions, let me write five pi by four and seven pi by four. Absolutely correct. Okay. Now principal solution is done. What about the general solution? So for this, I will start doing the same activity as what I did in the previous slide. Okay. So the very first angle, let me write down general solution as the name of the second question. Okay. So the first answer that 
comes to your mind will be five pi by four that you have already you know told me. By the way, yeah. Next answer that comes in your mind is, अच्छा can I can I also write this like this five pi by four. Ah. Uh, okay, I'll 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 write it in the next step maybe. Yeah. Yes, five pi by four. Next next value. What does it come out? Anybody? In fact, minus pi by four also you can write it. Yeah. Yes. Next one is two pi minus pi by four. Yes or no? Okay. What is the next value? Keep moving. Keep moving in such a way that you land up on these two lines. Next value. Three pi plus pi by four, very good. Next value. Four pi minus pi by four, absolutely. You're in the right direction. Keep moving. Keep moving. Acha, this. That's why I wanted to write it initially itself, but now I can. Yeah. One pi minus pi by four. This is zero pi minus pi by four. Yeah. Next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. Yes. Five pi plus pi by four. Next. Six pi minus pi by four, correct. Now here also I would request you. Enough, enough. We have we have done enough number of uh, we have enough data points to now know the pattern. So tell me what pattern do you see when you are writing it? So you see that you see that you are basically following the same pattern, okay? Yes or no? So let's say when n is even, you end up getting pi. Okay, when n is even, you let let's say I take n as two. So let's say two pi. This will become minus one to the power two minus pi by four, which is as good as two pi plus minus pi by four, which is as good as two pi minus pi by four. That's what we had got over here. Okay. So what I wanted to show by the help of the second example is that. You can actually generalize this and say if you are asked to solve sine x equal to k, okay, where you could express k as sine of some known angle alpha, okay, then the general solution for this equation, then the general solution for this equation is given by x equal to n pi. Plus minus one to the power n alpha, where n is a integer. So please make a note of this. Please, you know, keep this as one of your formulas in the formula list of your trigonometry. So knowing this formula, you can now solve many questions in a faster way related to this type of equation. so related to this type of equation you can easily write down all the formulas in quick time so let me just put a box around it yeah so for example if somebody asks you let's say sin x equal to root 3 by 2 find the general solution so all you need to do is All you need to do is what is the general solution? So all you need to do is just write root three by two as sine pi by three. So just now I told you that this is the general solution. So you can write general solution as x equal to n pi plus minus one to the power n pi by three, n belonging to integer. Over done. You don't have to sit and do all these you know listing of the angles to know the pattern. Okay, so initially it was good enough for us to you know do this exercise because we wanted to know the formula. Now that you have known the formula, you can directly make use of it to solve equations of this nature. Is it fine? Any questions anybody has? Okay, so one last uh, example we'll take up, and after that we will move on to the next set. So please solve sine x equal to 
negative half find the general solution for this equation what do you think is the general solution for this equation give me your answer on the chat box sin x equal to negative half what is the general solution for this equation Very good, Vishal. That's absolutely right. Correct, Harshita. Correct, Shlok. Absolutely correct. Anybody else? Come on, dear all. I want answers from everybody. Okay, why only few of you are answering? Yes. So now think of. An angle for which sin x becomes a minus half. So one angle that comes to my mind is minus pi by six. Okay, so I can write the general solution for this as x equal to n pi plus minus one to the power n minus pi by six. If you want, it is your call. Uh, you can write it as minus one to the power n plus one pi by six. Also, nothing will go wrong. Okay, so this is your general solution for this equation. Okay, this becomes your answer. Now here, one question that many people ask me, sir, uh, could I take seven pi by six also? Because sine seven pi by six is also minus half. Yes, you can take any angle that you want. However, I have seen some books. Uh, they all, they mention that this angle should be in the principal value branch of those functions, which actually is not required. So you can take any angle that comes in your mind. For example, if somebody mentions, somebody mentions this as sine seven pi by six, and writes the general solution to be x equal to n pi plus minus one to the power n seven pi by six, his answer is also going to be correct. This answer is also acceptable. This answer is also acceptable, right? Now, many a times you will be guided by the options sitting in the MCQ type question. So if MCT, uh, MCQ type of question says this is the answer, then you have to mark this. Or if the MCQ uh, options only contains this, then you have to mark this. Okay. So don't be very rigid that okay, I have to get this in my options, right? No, they may write your options like this also. So even this is fine. See, ultimately, what you want is when you list down your n is an integer, right? So when you list down all the answers from this yellow formula or this white formula, you are going to get the same infinitely long list of solutions. They will not differ from each other. Are you getting my point? Is it clear? Right? So please, uh, please understand here that there is not going to be you know, any miss, any, you can say, uh, the marks deduction, even if you write it like this or write it like this. Okay. So I, I saw Arya using this solution. So absolutely right. Arya that this is also correct. Right? Okay. Of course the N value that you're going to put here and the N value that you're going to put here, <coughs> they might differ from each other, but ultimately the list that you're going to form will be same for both of them. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? Any questions, any concerns? See, I'll give you an idea. If you put n as zero here, let's say in this, you put n as zero. What do you get the value of x as? What do you get the value of x as? Minus five by six. Correct? Here, if you put n as one, what do you get the value of x as? Check. Pi minus seven pi by six. What is that? Minus five by six. Correct. So ultimately the solution came out to be the same, but for the white one, you put N as zero for the yellow one. You have to put N as one. Okay. Now, are you going to miss out any solution? No, because N is all integers possible and integers themselves are infinite sets. So they're not going to end ever. 
okay so eventually you are going to get all the answers that you should be getting whether you use the yellow formula or you use the white formula there will be no difference got the point okay so please watch out for the options so which option to tick depends upon what options are there in the you know question let's do a similar exercise now for let's say this question cos x equal to let's say half okay so let's find out number 1 the principal solution principal solutions and let's find out the general solution general solution so principal solution is very simple please give me a response on the chat box for what angles between 0 to 2 pi do you think cos x is going to become a half fast 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 what are the angles pi by 3 absolutely Ah, uh, minus pi by three is not in zero to two pi. Ah, right, absolutely right, slope. So it will be two. Sorry, pi by three. Yeah, and two pi minus pi by three. Two pi minus pi by three will be pi pi by three. So these will be your principal solutions to this equation. Got it? All right. Now for the general solution, let us do some pattern recognition. Okay. So we'll start with. Pi by three, okay. Five pi by three, I will write it as two pi minus pi by three. So in short, basically, you have to come to these two positions. Either you can be in the first quadrant, pi by oh sorry, yeah, and you, yeah, pi by three, or in this position, two pi minus pi by three. So you already covered pi by three. You have already covered two pi minus pi by three. What is the next angle? What is the next angle? Two pi plus pi by three, correct? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? What is the next one? What is the next one? Next one is back to this position, which is four pi minus pi by three. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Next one. Next one is this position. What is that? Six pi. Sorry, four pi plus pi by three. Correct. Okay. Next will be which position? Again, coming back to this position. Tell me which angle? Which angle? Six pi minus pi by three. Correct. See, Arya. Please. Understand from the beginning, okay? This is pi by three. Then this position is two pi minus pi by three. Then this position is two pi plus pi by three. Then again, this position is four pi minus pi by three. Then again, this position is four pi plus pi by three. Then this position is six pi minus pi by three. Now tell me the next one. Next one will be this position. What will be that? Six pi plus pi by three. Okay, hey, you have to come to this position, Arya, not to eight pi position. This position. Okay, so now I think we have we have enough data points to figure out what is the pattern hidden. Can somebody tell me the pattern hidden? If you want, I can go back also. Let's say zero pi plus pi by three, zero pi minus pi by three. Dot dot dot. Can somebody tell me the pattern hidden? What what pattern do you see? As the coefficient of pi, so zero, two, four—that's always even, right? Absolutely, Arya. So can I say it is like two n pi? And now remember, for both, for any value of, let's say, multiple of, even multiple of pi, you both have a minus and a plus. So you can say plus minus pi by three. Is it fine? N being some integer, n belonging to integer. Please note this down. Please note this down. Your general solution for this equation, cos x equal to half, will be two n pi plus minus pi by three. Okay. So now I will save your and my time, and let us generalize it straight away after one example only. 
so let me generalize it so if anybody gives you cos x or cos of any variable equal to some k where that k could be written as cos of some known angle alpha then the general solution is given by then the general solution is given by x equal to 2n pi plus minus alpha n being integer please make a note of this please note this down is it fine any questions any concerns any questions any concerns anybody okay so uh, let's take one or two more questions based on the same if i ask you uh, write down the general solution of cos x equal to negative root 3 by 2 what is the general solution what your answer will be write it down on the chat box what is the general solution for this equation Very good, Vishal. Anybody else? very good uh, satyam mm -hmm. harshita okay see uh, first tell me any angle that comes to your mind for which cos becomes negative root 3 by 2 150 degree correct 150 degree is 5 pi by 6 isn't it so can i say the general solution for this will be 2 n pi plus minus 5 pi by 6 over n being some integer okay by the way some of you are giving me the answer as minus 2n pi minus uh, pi by 3 please note that minus pi by 3 cos becomes half so cos of minus 60 degree is half so it's not going to meet this requirement okay so this becomes your answer to this question is it fine any questions any questions any questions any concerns okay try one more try one more uh cos x is equal to uh let's say let's say let's say let's say 1 by a negative 1 by root 2 find the general solution for this what is the general solution for the equation very good very good uh, satya ji satyam slok anybody else harshita very good ah venkat again same mistake ah uh, venkat try to understand this see minus 1 by root 2 will be obtained when cos is either in the second quadrant or in the third quadrant when you are writing minus pi by 4 here you have taken it to the fourth quadrant fourth quadrant is where cos is again positive it cannot give you minus 1 by root 2 correct so either you say cos 3 pi by 4 or you say cos 5 pi by 4 both are fine but you can't say minus pi by 4 correct so let's take this as our you uh, know uh, alpha value and write down the general solution so general solution will be x equal to 2n pi 
plus minus 3 pi by 4 n belonging to integer. This would be your answer to this question. Is it fine? Any questions? Any doubts? Any concerns? Please do highlight. All right. Moving to the next example. Let's say tan x equal to root 3. Okay. Let's write down the principal solution and general solution for this simple basic trigonometric equation. So let's start with principal solutions first. So think of the angles which come between 0 to 2 pi or which lie between 0 to 2 pi, including 0 but not 2 pi, for which your tan x becomes root 3. Write your values down on the chat box. Very good, very good. Okay, so root 3 becomes a stroke small mistake. Uh, tan pi by 3 is root 3. Okay, so pi by 3. Okay, that's in the first quadrant. And one more you will get in the third quadrant when you add a pi to this. So that will become 4 pi by 3. So these are your principal solutions. Okay, tan pi by 6 will give you 1 by root 3. Got it, so but our our question was tan x equal to root 3. Okay, so 60 degrees and 240 degrees, which is your 2 pi by 3, sorry, uh, 4 pi by 3, that becomes your principal solutions. Now, the general solutions. For the general solutions, we need to observe the pattern. Okay, so let us start observing the pattern. So let me start with pi by 3 itself. And then 4 pi by 3 is like pi plus pi by 3. So the idea is, dear students, that in order to get the general solutions, we need to keep coming to these positions. One is here, okay, pi by 3, 60 degrees, and to this position, okay. So you have already accounted for pi by 3. You have already accounted for pi plus pi by 3. Now you have to come back to this position. So what will you write? Tell me. 2 pi plus pi by 3, correct. Now you have to come back to this position. What will you write? 3 pi plus pi by 3. Excellent. You have started observing the pattern. Very good. Next, I have to come to this position now. 4 pi plus pi by 3. Absolutely. Okay. Now, I think we have enough data points now to figure out what is the pattern involved. So, what is the pattern involved? Please write down on the chat box. Right. n pi plus pi by 3, n being integer. Correct. Asatejit. So, we'll further generalize it. This is only for tan x equal to root 3. So now, since you all have understood this concept, let me save your and my time by jumping to the generalization of this particular equation. So in order to find the general solution of tan x equal to k kind of an equation, where k could be written as tan alpha. Now, many people ask me, sir, what if I'm not able to figure out an alpha for which k is tan alpha? Then what do we do in that case? Right. So nothing to worry. I'll tell you the solution for that also. So the general solution for this will be the general solution for this will be x equal to n pi plus alpha, where n is an integer. Okay. Note this down. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. Now starting from let's say the first formula that we did here. If you're not able to figure out an alpha, if you're not able to figure an, out an alpha, then you can also write x equal to n pi plus minus 1 to the power n sine inverse alpha in your answer. Okay, n being integer. Because many times they will give you unfamiliar numbers also. For example, if I give you, let's say something like uh, 1 by 6. Now, Normally, in our day-to-day, -day, you know, dealing with trigonometry, we don't know any angle for which sine gives you 1 by 6. 
for that probably we'll have to refer to the log book okay or log table or maybe use a calculator which is anyways not allowed so in those cases you can leave your answer like this n pi plus minus 1 to the power n sin inverse 1 by 6 that's fine okay but if you know the alpha for example if it is a known ratio for example half root 3 by 2 1 by root 2 or negative of these 1 0 then of course you can put your actual value alpha is it fine okay similarly here also i'll just include in case you are not able to find a known alpha you can write it as plus minus cos inverse k Uh, sign inverse k only i don't know what did i write oh sorry yeah thanks vishal <laughs> my mistake i wrote alpha thank you thank you for correcting that okay yeah here cos inverse k fine and i think in the last one which i took just now if your uh, alpha is not you know you're not able to find out an alpha for which tan alpha is a k then you can also leave your answer like tan inverse k okay that is also fine is it okay any questions any concerns let's take a simple example further on this let's say if i say tan x equal to 1 by root 3 tell me the general solution Tell me the general solution. Write down on the chat box quickly, quickly, quickly. Excellent. n pi plus now we are one by root three is a familiar ratio, right? For which the angle is 30 degree, right? Pi by six. So it's n pi plus pi by six. Okay. N being some integer. So this becomes your general solution for this question. Is it fine? Any questions? Any questions? Sorry for this stray mark. I'll write it again. Not an issue. Yeah. Now carrying forward with the same exercise now i would like you to tell me the principle and the general solution for this equation sine square x equal to 1 by 4 so write down the principle solutions and the general solutions for this equation Let's focus on principal solution first. Yes, tell me, what are the values of x for which sine square x is 1 by 4? Very good. Uh, now, everybody, please pay attention. Okay, okay. See, everybody, please pay attention. Sine square x equal to one fourth is equivalent to solving sine x equal to half as well as sine x equal to minus half. Okay. So, you will get certain values of x coming from this equation, which is pi by 6, 5 pi by 6. And you'll also get certain values of x coming from this equation, 
which is going to be 7 pi by 6. Correct me if I'm wrong. And 11 pi by 6. Am I right? So four solutions are going to come. Four principal solutions are going to come for this equation. Okay. So these will be your principal solutions. Fine. Now, what about the general solution? What about the general solution? Let's try to figure that out. Okay. Let's see the pattern. Remember, sine x equal to half or minus half will eventually cover all the four quadrants because in every quadrant, you will either have the positive value coming or the negative value coming. For example, in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant, you will have 30 degree coming. In the second quadrant, you will have 150 degree, which is 5 pi by 6. In the third quadrant, you will have 7 pi by 6. And in the fourth quadrant, you will have 11 pi by 6. Correct. So keep this in mind and start giving me what are the what are the possible angles that you are getting so that we can observe a pattern. So first angle is pi by 6, which is this one. Correct. Let me make it in white. Yeah, this one. Okay. Next angle is 5 pi by 6. That I will write it as pi minus pi by 6. Okay. Next angle is this angle, which is actually pi plus pi by 6. Correct. Next angle is this angle, which is going to be, which is going to be 2 pi minus pi by 6. Yes or no? Next angle is going to be this angle. What is that? 2 pi plus pi by 6. Very good. Next angle is going to be this angle. What is that? 3 pi minus pi by 6. Very good, Arya. I have almost, I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next value will be this angle, which is 3 pi plus pi by 6, right? See, now I think you should have enough number of data points to write it. Dot, dot, dot. What is the general solution? Or what is the pattern that you see here? The pattern that you would be seeing here is n pi right plus minus pi by 6 n being integer n being an integer, isn't it? Okay. Is it fine? So this becomes your general solution to this question. Okay. Now, many people ask me this question and I think the same would be running in your mind as well. Why don't we solve this equation or why don't we write the general solution for this equation, which happens to be x equal to n pi plus minus 1 to the power n pi by 6. And why don't we write the general solution for this equation, which is n pi plus minus 1 to the power n minus pi by 6. And why don't we do this? Why don't we take the union of those two solutions? Why don't we take the union of those two solutions? That means x is equal to n pi plus minus 1 to the power n pi by 6 union with n pi plus minus 1 to the power n minus pi by 6. Now, let me tell you this is correct. I mean, I'm not denying it. I'm not saying that this is a wrong result or something. But normally the question setter, I mean, I have never seen a question where the question setter has mentioned the answer like this. Okay. First of all, it looks very complicated. Okay. It is not wrong. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say this is a wrong result. No, by no means I want to say this is a wrong result. But when you have a simpler version of the same thing, why to use a complicated version? Unless until it is there in your options. Okay. That I cannot guarantee that a question setter cannot give this as an option. But if you can use or if you find this option sitting in your question, go for this option. You don't have to look for this option always. Okay. So this is also correct, but this way of writing the answer is very rare. I have never seen answers written like this. In fact, even if, if, and if they have written, it is very, you know, less in occasion. Okay. So this is an alternative way. Let me write it as auditor. Okay. 
So this is an alternative way to get the same question done, but this is not a, you can say preferred way of writing your answer. This is more preferred. This, this fellow is more preferred. Are you getting my point? Any questions? Any concerns? So now can we generalize this as well? Yes. So let us generalize this as well. So if somebody gives you an equation like this, sine square X is equal to K, of course, a positive quantity. Okay. Or let me write it like this K square. Okay. Where you can write K square as sine square alpha, alpha being some known angle. Then you can write the general solution as, then you can write down the general solution as x equal to n pi plus minus alpha or if alpha is not you know a, a well known angle that means you are not able to figure out an alpha for such scenario you can leave your answer like this also sine inverse okay okay of course n being integer Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? Note it down, copied. Any questions? Okay, let's take a simple example uh, just to further get this concept clear. Let's say if I ask you to solve sine square x is equal to half. Okay, find the general solution for this equation. Very good stroke. So this can be written as one by root two square, right? One by root two square is sine pi by four square, right? So you can write the general solution without much waste of time n pi plus minus pi by four n being integer. Is this fine? Achha, please don't get confused with this formula and the one which we wrote for tan x equal to k, right? There, there is no plus minus. There's only n pi plus alpha. So please don't get confused between this formula and this formula. Okay. This is only n pi plus alpha. Fine. The one which we took in the previous slide. Initially what happens? People uh, tend to mix up those two. Okay. Is it okay? Any questions? Any questions? Any concerns? Fine. Now all of you please pay attention. Something very interesting that we are going to talk about. If somebody asks you to solve this kind of equation, Okay. Right. For example, let's say if somebody asks you, let me just write it down like this equal to, let's say one by four. Okay. Which is nothing but, uh, cos pi by three, the whole square. Correct. Now, please understand here. Everybody please understand here. Saying this and saying this. Are the same things? Yes or no? You all agree? Okay, so writing this and writing this are same things. Right? Now just add a one to both the sides of the equation. Correct? So 
this becomes sin square x is equal to sin square pi by 3 correct so this is as good as saying x equal to n pi plus minus pi by 3 which means that there is no change in the general solution even for this kind of an equation okay so here please note everybody even if somebody asks you to solve let me generalize this okay even if you somebody asks you to solve cos square x equal to k square where k could be written as cos alpha in this case also the general solution is the same as what we saw in the previous slide in this case also it will be n pi plus minus alpha okay and being an integer or if let's say alpha is not a familiar angle it will be n pi plus minus cos inverse k okay is it fine any questions so a big sigh of relief that you you have to now learn one formula less at least isn't it <laughs> okay so let's take an example based on this as well i already took one example i'll take one more uh cos square x is equal to 3 by 4 please write down the general solution for this please write down the general solution for this then okay so 3 by 3 by 4 is nothing but root 3 by 2 the whole square correct which is nothing but cos of pi by 6 correct so cos pi by 6 whole square so the general solution will be x equal to n pi plus minus pi by 6 is it fine any questions any concerns is it fine okay great now let's talk about a similar set for tan also let's say if i ask you tan square x is 3 okay write down the general solution for this okay now all of you please pay attention saying this is as good as saying this Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct, or tan square pi by three. Let's write it like this. Okay, it is as good as saying, it is as good as saying, reciprocal of this, or you can say add a one to this. It is as good as saying this. Correct, which is as good as saying this. Okay. if you reciprocate it it is as good as saying this and this is something which we have already figured out which was n pi plus minus pi by 3 and being integer okay so what is the moral of the story here the moral of the story here is actually it doesn't matter whether you take sin square x equal to sin square alpha cos square x equal to cos square alpha or tan square x equal to tan square alpha for each one of them the general solution will be the same okay so even if we generalize this even if we generalize this so if tan square x equal to k square where k could be written as tan of alpha okay then even for this the general solution remains the same so for the last three that we have done today the formula is going to be same for all of them or same for the last three of them okay 
Or let's say if your angle alpha is not well known, you can also leave your answer like tan inverse k. Okay, n being some integer. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Okay, so let us summarize. Or you want me to do give you one more problem? Okay, let's say one more problem before we summarize. Uh, give me the general solution of tan square x equal to let's say let's say let's say one. Let's keep it simple. Yeah, give me the general solution. Sometimes they will not say the word general solution. Sometimes they will just say the word solve. Solve this equation. So whenever you have a trigonometric equation and they have used the word solve, it is as good as asking you for the general solution. Yeah, please write it down. Absolutely right, Satyam. So it's n pi plus minus pi by four n being integer. Okay, because one is as good as tan pi by four the whole square. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? In the six formulas that we have done today, yes, we have done six formulas. In the last one hour of the class, so I'll summarize them also in the next uh, in the next slide. But before I move on, please let me know if you have any issues, any concerns, any questions. Okay, no doubt. Okay, so let me give you a summary. I mean, summary doesn't mean the chapter is over. I'm just giving you a summary of whatever we have done till now. Okay, so if you have if you have sine x equal to sine alpha kind of a scenario, acha. By the way, just because I'm using x over here, that doesn't mean all the equations that you will come across they will use x only. They could use theta also. Okay, they could use any variable they want. Okay, so for such case, for such case, let me just make a table kind of a scenario. This is my serial number. Yeah. This is your equation. This is your general solution. Yeah. So for sine x equal to sine alpha, the general solution is x equal to n pi plus minus one to the power n. Alpha or sine inverse. I mean, if suppose this is uh, not convertible to sine alpha, then you can write sine inverse k also, n being integer. If you have been given cos x equal to cos alpha, the general solution is two n pi plus minus alpha. If your equation given to you is tan x equal to tan alpha, then your general solution is n pi plus alpha. And the fourth is basically, let's say if you have any of the three, sine square x equal to sine square alpha, or cos square x equal to cos square alpha, or tan square x is equal to tan square alpha. For all these three, the general solution that we follow is n pi plus minus alpha n being integer. Is it fine? Any questions? Okay. So this is a quick summary of whatever we have done in the last one hour, fifteen minutes, or one hour, twelve minutes of the class. Okay, now let's start solving actual questions. Okay, let's start solving actual questions. Let's start with this question. If sine alpha one and cos two alpha are in GP, find the general solution for alpha. 
Uh, Harshita, I can go back to that slide a little later on. First, solve this question. Yes, anybody with success? Okay, Vishal, very good. See, what has been given that these three terms are in geometric progression. So when three numbers are in geometric progression, R in GP, we have already seen that in a geometric progression, B square will be equal to AC, correct? So B square means one is equal to AC. AC means sine alpha cos to alpha. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. Now, can we do one thing? Can we write... Uh, cos 2 alpha as 1 minus 2 sine square alpha, right? From our half angles formula. Oh, okay, Vishal, you want to change your answer? That's fine. It's okay. All right. Now, if you please pay attention, this is as good as saying sine alpha minus 2 sine cube alpha. Now, this leads to a cubic equation in terms of sine alpha, isn't it? This leads to this equation. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. So assume that your sine uh, alpha is like your y. Okay. So let sine alpha is y. So it's like 2y cube minus y plus 1 equal to 0. Can you, now this is a cubic equation. So we have to guess one of the roots in order to factorize it. So can you guess one of the roots? In my opinion, I believe minus one is going to work. Just check this out. Will minus one work? So two into minus one plus one plus one. Yes, it satisfies. So this works. Okay. So y equal to minus one satisfies. Fine. So this, you can take y plus one to be a factor. So let me factorize it in a faster way. Since there is a two y cube sitting over here and there's only a white pulled out, there will be two y square coming. 
and there is a one sitting over here and there is a one over here so one will be there and in between there will be something like let's say ky let's find that k out uh let's let's compare this with this so if you just take the coefficient of y square from both the expressions there is no y square so let me write it down comparing coefficient of y square so in the the top one there is no y square so you can write a zero and in the down one you will get a y square from this 2 into 1 and k into y so k plus 2 is equal to this so k value is going to be negative 2 that means this is as good as saying y plus 1 times 2y square minus 2y plus 1 correct so now please understand that this expression this expression can never be zero why can this never be zero because you can complete a perfect square with that let me show you how you can write it as twice y square minus y plus one so you can write this as y minus half the whole square minus one by four plus one Okay, that is going to give you two times y minus half the whole square plus half. So this term will always be greater than half. In fact, greater than or equal to half. So it can never be zero. Okay, so this is the reason why this term can never be zero. And hence the only possibility is y is minus half. This is the only possibility, which means you're trying to say sine alpha is a minus one, right? So if sine alpha is a minus one, minus one, you can write it as sine negative pi by two. So you can write the general solution as n pi, n pi plus minus one to the power n minus pi by two. Okay. N being a integer. This becomes your solution to this question. Is it fine? So absolutely right, Vishal. I think Vishal got it absolutely right. Yes, yes, yes. You can write 3 pi by 2 as well. No issue, Satyajit. Instead of minus pi by 2, you can write 3 pi by 2 as well. No issues at all. Is it okay? Any questions, any concerns? Shall we go to the next question now? Okay, sorry. I think Harshita wanted me to take back to the previous slide. Okay, yeah. Yes, Harshita, if you want to copy something, you can do so. Fine. So we'll move on to the next question now. Okay. Let's take this one. Solve this equation sine square theta minus cos theta equal to one by four and write the values of theta in this interval zero to two pi. Let me just add one more point to this question. Let's say we also want to find out the general solution. Let's say we also want to find out the general solution.
<clears throat> okay, Vishal. See what you learned. They were the building blocks. Okay, so use those building blocks now to address slightly complicated problems like this. Now, when you see this question, what comes in your mind? What is the first thing that comes in your mind when you see this equation? Don't you feel like converting everything to cos so that you can make a quadratic equation out of it? Yes or no? Correct. And thankfully, I can do so because sine square is sitting over here, so I can write this as. Okay, uh, Harshita, Vishal, Slok, very good. Let's discuss it out. Right. So can I write it like this? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. So let's uh, simplify this even further. So four minus four cos square theta minus four cos theta equal to one. That means four cos square theta plus four cos theta e minus three equal to zero. Right? Any questions? So this is a plain and simple quadratic in terms of cos theta. Okay. So let cos theta be y. So you can just treat it like a quadratic four y square plus four y minus three equal to zero. Is it fine? Can we factorize this? I think so. We can easily factorize this. Okay. Take a two y common y plus three, and I think take a minus one common y plus three equal to zero. So this is easily factorizable as two y minus one times y plus three equal to zero. Okay. Now put your cos x, sorry, cos theta back. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Even at this position, right? So this gives us two possibilities: either two cos theta minus one is zero, that means cos of theta is half. Can we write a general solution for this? Can we write a general solution for this? Yes. So general solution will be two n pi. Now half is as good as half is as good as cos pi by three, right? So it'll be plus minus pi by three as per the formula that we have seen a little while ago. And the other possibility is actually not a possibility because cos theta cannot be. Or let me write it like this: cos theta is equal to minus three by two, which is not possible. Which is not possible. Cos of theta cannot be beyond one or cannot be lesser than minus one. So this is ruled out. So this is the only possibility. This is the only. Solution possible. Okay. Acha. By the way, they were asking for zero to two pi. Okay. So for zero to two pi, let us solve this. So if your theta has to lie between zero to two pi, the possible set of solution will be uh, pi by three, of course, and I think five pi by three. Okay. So these two will be your zero to two pi solutions. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Is it fine? Can you move on to the next question? Okay, let's take another one. By the way, all of you are expected to be good in your basic trigonometric identities. So here is a question which says, 
solve cos theta plus cos three theta plus cos five theta plus cos seven theta equal to zero. By the way, the meaning of the word solve is finding the general solution. Okay, so solve just means finding the general solution. Oh, good. So this will act like a revision for you all. Okay, Vishal, anybody else? Okay, Satyam. Okay, so let's try to solve this question. <clears throat> 
let's try to club these two expressions together and these two expressions together so i hope all of you remember the formula of cos a plus cos b cos a plus cos b is 2 cos a plus b by 2 into cos a minus b by 2 i hope all of you have you know retain the reduction uh, sorry a transformation formula okay in your mind through practice so the first two terms will give you 2 cos theta plus 3 theta 4 theta by 2 which is 2 theta and theta minus 3 theta which is minus 2 theta divided by 2 which is minus theta but cos does not care about negativity of the angle because cos is a even function so whether you say cos minus theta or cos theta it doesn't care about the negativity same with this also it will become 2 cos 6 theta okay into cos theta and this is given to you okay as a zero take 2 cos theta common you will have cos 2 theta plus cos 6 theta so this will become 2 cos theta this is going to become 2 cos 4 theta into cos uh if i am not mistaken this will be 2 theta again yes or no in short it simplifies to something like this correct so now everybody please pay attention if the product of three quantities is zero either this could be zero or this could be zero or this could be zero correct now the general solution for this will be theta equal to 2n pi please note that zero means cos pi by 2 right so 2n pi plus minus pi by 2 now all of you please pay attention something very important i would like to discuss over here when you say 2n plus minus pi by 2 if you see here if you put start putting dummy values for n let's say if i start with n as 0 that will give you theta value as uh, pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 correct when you put n value as a 1 that will give you theta value as now see 2 pi minus pi by 2 will be 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi plus pi by 2 will be 5 pi by 2 correct similarly if you put n as 2 you will get theta value as 5 pi by 2 and 7 pi by 2 sorry uh n value as 1 n value as 2 will give you 4 yeah sorry 4 7 pi by 2 and 9 pi by 2 i'm so sorry 7 pi by 2 and 9 pi by 2 okay and so on by the way if you see it is catering to all odd multiples of pi by 2 so this solution can be bettered by writing it like this 2n plus 1 pi by 2 or you can write 2n minus 1 pi by 2 also both are fine okay so generally speaking you will not see this written in your answer many a times right instead of that they will write either this or this okay so when cos theta is zero you can just say it's an odd multiple of pi by 2 that's it see i'm not i'm not saying that this is wrong to write or this is you know the only way to write it no i'm not trying to say that both are acceptable both are fine but why to write it like this when you can write it just 2n plus 1 pi by 2 an odd multiple of pi by 2 simple as that similarly for here i can write 2 theta as 2n plus 1 pi by 2 which means theta could be 2n plus 1 pi by 4 and being integer okay and this last one this last one you can write it as 4 theta as 2n plus 1 pi by 2 or theta is equal to 2n plus 1 pi by 8 and being some integer is it fine any questions
so three set of solutions are possible here what are the possible solutions theta could be 2n plus 1 pi by 2 or 2n plus 1 pi by 4 or 2n plus 1 pi by 8 okay so these are the possible set of solutions okay any questions any concerns please do let me know so i think uh, uh, satyam you only got i think one of one of these three right so all the three are possible all the three are possible okay any questions any questions please note this down and if you have any questions please feel free to highlight it out okay let's try to slightly complicate these questions uh can i go to the next slide if you are all are done can i go to the next slide everybody is done okay let's take this question two to the power 1 plus mod cos x plus mod cos x the whole square plus mod cos x cube and so on till infinity is 4 find the general solution for this equation okay satyam see uh, first of all on the numerator if you see the power is a geometric progression correct 
right as you can see it's a infinite geometric progression correct so this is a infinite geometric progression am i right infinite gp right now remember 2 to the power something is giving you 4 that means this 4 is actually 2 to the power of 2 that means this power is a 2 now for an infinite gp let's recall for an infinite gp what is the sum what is the sum of an infinite gp of course uh, you know the number of sorry the common ratio of this term should be less than 1 a by 1 minus r absolutely so this will become 1 by 1 minus mod cos x correct in other words 1 minus mod cos x is half that means mod of cos x is half so dear all please remember this is as good as saying cos square x is equal to half square which is actually cos pi by 3 square so remember the general solution for this was n pi plus minus pi by 3 please don't forget those basic formulas so this becomes your solution to this question n pi plus minus pi by 3 Is it fine? Any questions? So Harshita was absolutely right. Very good, Harshita. Is it fine? Satyam also got it right. Okay. Let's discuss now some important facts, some important uh, you know, type of questions. Let me first start with this type of question, which is normally asked in, in your competitive exams a sin x sorry a cos x plus b sin x equal to c even if you can call it as a sin x plus b cos x is also equal to c doesn't matter so how do we solve this kind of a question a cos x plus b sin x equal to c okay now here please understand few things you know before i start solving this uh, type of questions there are few things i would like to you know write down for you all uh, let's let's understand few things over here I'll come back to this topic name. So let us understand. Important points to be remembered for solving any equation. In fact, these are some general, you know, guidelines we should, we should all follow while solving equations. Okay. Uh, after this, I'll come back to that uh, type. Okay. So the first thing is, the first thing is avoid squaring both sides of an equation. Now, please note the word. I'm not saying don't square. I'm saying avoid. Avoid means as far as possible, don't square both sides of the equation. But however, there are some equations which you cannot solve without squaring. So you have to square, right? So why do we ask people not to square unnecessarily? Is because squaring introduces extraneous roots into the system. So extraneous roots will creep into the system. Okay, so this leads to extraneous roots. Extraneous root means extra roots will come into the system. Okay, so for example, if somebody has this equation x equal to 1, Okay, and he tries to square both the sides. Then this will lead to this will lead to this scenario. Okay, and unnecessarily he'll get two answers, one and a minus one, whereas the solution was only one. X value was only supposed to be one, but because you squared it, 
you ended up getting one more answer which is actually an extraneous solution okay now i'm not trying to say by any means that don't square and solve it if you have a necessity that without squaring i will not be able to solve it then go for it but mind you after the process is over that means after you have got the solution you must check which of the solutions that i have got does not satisfy my original equation those are extra roots they have to be removed from your answer right are you getting my point so square it and solve it where you have the liberty or where you have the you can say uh, you know the easiness to actually figure out or actually remove the extraneous solutions from your answer list okay so here is a word of advice don't try to square where there is a general solution been asked because if a general solution is been asked even the extraneous roots will be very very large in number so removing all those solutions would become a tedious task a complicated or complex task for you all okay i'll tell you what do i mean by that if there are few in number for example if you have been asked to find the solution in a limited value of x that is 0 to 2 pi or 0 to 4 pi then you can square and solve and whatever extra roots come into the system you can check with the original equation and remove those extraneous solutions but wherever general solution is asked don't square it because if you square and solve it even the extraneous solution will be infinitely many in number removing them will become a herculean task in that case okay i'll come back with an example on that second thing that you should keep in mind is do not cancel do not cancel an unknown factor this i have been telling this since very beginning okay what does this lead to this leads to loss of genuine solution okay the most simplest example that i keep giving people is let's say x square is equal to x right now you what you are doing you are cancelling one of the x's correct and you write x equal to 1 please note that this so this equation could have zero also as one of its solution so x could be zero also and x could be one also but you lost this guy because you just you know scored off x x from both the positions both the sides so do not cancel any factor which is unknown to you unknown to you means i don't know what is x and still i am cancelling it out okay so please cancel out factors which is whose value is known to you for example if there was a 2x and there was an let's say 4x square i would have cancelled 2 and 2 because i know 2 is not 0 okay or let's say somebody tells you that okay x is not equal to 0 then you can cancel it out but don't cancel any unknown factor because that factor could have been a 0 and then it could has it could have been a root of that solution which otherwise you will lose on cancelling okay so this is something which i have told you since the bridge course days so don't cancel any unknown factor it will lead to loss of genuine solution okay third thing do not do not accept any solution that makes any function or any sub function involved let me write sub function involved in the equation involved in the equation undefined okay undefined okay so please do not accept any solution that makes any sub function or functions involved in the equation as undefined in other words no solution beyond the domain is acceptable beyond the domain is acceptable okay please understand this see let me give you an example let us say you were given some equation okay and that equation contained let's say tan x 
fine and you solve that equation somehow and you got one of the answers as pi by 2 now will you accept pi by 2 as your answer given that there was a tan x in the equation will you accept pi by 2 you will say no because at pi by 2 tan x is not defined so many times it happens there are so many trigonometric identities that we convert one into the other and we solve it and we realize that okay i got an answer but if that answer is making the original equation any function undefined any function even if one of the function is <coughs> one of the function is undefined that solution will be rejected you will not be honoring that uh, solution you will be just rejecting it are you getting this point so please keep these things in your mind whenever you are solving any equation in this world need not be only trigonometric equation any equation for example if you are dealing with something like under root okay the equation contains under root of something so let's say you got an answer for which that under root thing is becoming i mean the 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 expression within the root is becoming negative that answer has to be rejected isn't it because you can't operate you can't apply a even root on a negative value that will give you imaginary answers are you getting what i'm trying to say so whenever you are solving an equation in whatever way you are solving it go for it i'm not uh, restricting the way to, uh, you like you would like to solve a equation but make sure the answers that are coming okay they make the original equation you know they satisfy the original equation okay they should not make any term undefined what the point okay now with this we are going to move on to uh, the type which i was going to talk about because it involves uh, you know one of these important points that i have given you uh, so i should have actually given you this in the beginning of the first question in fact the, before the first question so let's say this is the equation that we normally okay get to solve in many competitive exams a cos x plus b sin x equal to c okay now let me illustrate this with an example let's say somebody gives me this equation to solve fine now you tell me how would you solve this equation so let's let's solve this equation under two situations number 1 solve when your x is between 0 to 2 pi and second solve for the general solution or get the general solution okay so i've given you two scenarios to solve okay one is your answer should be between 0 to 2 pi that's a very uh, you know you can say limited value of x which i need so your your answer should be only between 0 to 2 pi i don't want beyond it and the second part of the question is i want the general solution for it okay now all of you please pay attention please pay attention if you have been given a very restricted value of x from where you have to find the solution you can actually go for squaring as well that means i could go for squaring both the sides so for the first one i could go for the squaring now you would be thinking sir told avoid squaring as far as possible yes avoid it but in this case squaring is going to help me out to find the solution faster okay but mind you my dear students this will come with extraneous solutions why this will come with extraneous solutions because this incorporates not only the solution for our given equation but this also will you know additionally give you solutions for this equations also isn't it so this equation we don't want we only want this equation solution but when you square it your solutions for both the equations are going to come under the same that means extraneous extraneous extra solutions are going to come up getting my point never mind since it is a limited range i am going to easily you know remove them off how i will show you that as well so when you square it you get cos square x plus sin square x plus 2 cos x sin x equal to 1 right now cos square plus sin square is anyways a 1 and by the way 2 cos x sin x is as good as a sin 2x isn't it yes or no 
that means sine of 2x is a zero correct so sine zero is also zero so you can write down the general solution as 2x is n pi plus okay minus 1 to the power n into zero which is as good as n pi okay which means x is n pi by 2 n could be any integer okay so our solution for 0 to 2 pi could be 0 okay so when i put n as 0 i'll get a 0 it could be pi by 2 it could be 2 pi by 2 it could be 3 pi by 2 correct or it could be 4 pi by 2 which is 2 pi correct now see everybody please pay attention does 0 satisfy our equation original equation which is cos x plus sin x equal to 1 is 0 satisfying the equation tell me yes or no yes it is accepted correct is pi by 2 going to satisfy our original equation yes is pi going to satisfy the original equation think carefully and say no this guy is an extraneous solution how did it come up into the system because of that squaring activity so because I squared, it led to pi creeping into my solution set. Are you getting my point? But it is easy to identify because this, this range itself is a small range. 0 to 2 pi only, I can figure it out. Right? 3 pi by 2, will it satisfy it? No, because cos 3 pi by 2 is 0, but sine 3 pi by 2 is negative 1. So it is, come, it is basically satisfying the second equation whose solution I don't want. Okay. 2 pi will it satisfy? Yes. Okay. So there are only three solutions possible. So your x value will be either 0, pi by 2, or 2 pi only. Is it clear? Any questions? Okay. This was the first part when your solution is only between some very restricted interval specified by the question setter. But when it comes to general solution, Please don't square it because here you could hand pick them and remove them, right? Let's say, you know, let's say your mom is cooking rice and that rice has got some, you know, uh, small, small stones into it. It's very easy to remove those stones if they're few, but let's say half the rice is stone only. You will, you will, you will say, you will I know, rather not use this rice at all, isn't it? Because you will waste so much of time picking those infinitely many number of stones present in it. So. If your rice has a limited number of stones, you can consider handpicking them and throwing them off. But if your rice contains infinitely many stones, you will rather not use that rice at all. Okay. So the same thing will happen in general solution also. In general solution, those number of stones, which is unwanted stuff, <coughs> they will be infinitely many in number. So what? Why do you know use this method? So the second, uh, you know, set, uh, solution that I'll be showing you. I will not square it. So what I'm going to do, see, very interesting. Uh, rather, I'll, I'll go to the right side of the screen. Yeah. So for the general solution, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a concept which I had discussed with you in the trigonometry chapter, trigonometric functions chapter, which is called the harmonic form. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create something like this. All of you, please pay attention. Okay. So this term that you see here, it's actually nothing but cos x minus pi by 4. Am I right? So basically, I'm converting it to a single cos function. You can convert it to sine function also. It is your call. Okay. But... Many times it depends upon the options also. Is everybody convinced with the fact that the original equation that we had can be written like this? Yes or no? Which means cos x minus pi by 4 could be written as 1 by root 2. 1 by root 2 is cos pi by 4. So can I write a general solution for this like this? 2n pi plus minus pi by 4. Which means my x can be written as 2n pi plus minus pi by 4 plus pi by 4. Okay. N being an integer. But again, this is not a good way to write the answer. So you could take two cases out of it. One with a plus sign. 
and other with a minus sign. Okay, so the first one will give you 2n uh, 2n pi plus pi by 2 and the second one will give you 2n pi. Okay, now all of you please pay attention. So the general solution will become your x could be either of the nature 2n pi or of the nature 2n pi plus pi by 2. Now check, if you put some values uh, let's say I want to know how many solutions are possible between 0 to 2 pi. So let us use this general solution to get the answer to the first part of the question. So 0 to 2 pi, I can choose n as 0. So if I choose n as 0, I will end up getting x as 0 and pi by 2. Okay. And if I put n as a 1, I will end up getting 2 pi. And now remember, this will exceed 2 pi, right? Because when I put n as 1, this will become pi pi by 2. So this is the only three solutions possible. 0, pi by 2, 2 pi. Is it matching with our answer that we had got? 0, pi by 2, 2 pi c. Okay. So I got the same answer, but this time I did not square it. Why did not I avoid why I didn't square it? Because if I square it, it will lead to lot of extraneous solutions and those lot of extraneous solutions I will not be able to remove. Okay. So this is the way to solve it without squaring as well. Is this fine? So please note this down. Then I'll give you some generic, uh, you know, gyan about this little later on. First note this down. Uh, you want me to drag the screen up and down? Let me know. Now, I know many of you would be, uh, you know, having this query in your mind, how to, you know, convert this whole thing, you know, easily like this, that also I will revise with you how to do it easily. Okay. So just copy this down. Then I will tell you how to do it for the generic cases. Now, uh, I would prefer converting it to cos actually rather than sine. See, I have an option to convert this expression in terms of sine also and cos also, both options I have. But I would prefer converting it to cos because cos general formula is less complicated. Isn't it? 2n pi plus minus alpha, right? Sine general formula is slightly complicated. n pi plus minus 1 to the power n alpha. So I prefer converting it to cos rather than sine. But again, this is not a compulsion. You can use, you can convert it to sine and cos any of the two that you want. And that also is decided by the options many a times. Okay. Can you scroll down? Yes. Why not Harshita? This place is this fine? Done? Okay. Now let us write down the general procedure to solve it. Let's say if somebody asks you to solve this equation. Okay. So what I do normally is I write a, now I'll tell you a trick how to convert it to a single cost function also. That trick also I'll tell you. Write this a as r cos theta Okay. And write this B as R sine theta. Okay. And get your R and theta by simply squaring them and adding them. So if you square them and add them, you'll get R square. By the way, cos square plus sine square is going to become a one. So let me just write it. And you can get your R as under root of A square plus B square. Now, both the possibilities are there minus plus take plus. Okay. That is good enough for you to solve the question. No need to take, you know, uh, other one minus, and you can get your theta by taking the ratio. 
So divide second by the first. So if you divide second by the first, you get tan theta as b by. So your theta value also can be obtained very easily. Okay. So for example, in our previous case, we had cos x plus sin x, right? So a is one, b is one. Correct. So in this case, r will be two. For this case, r will be two, and theta will be tan inverse one, which is pi by four. Okay. Now once you make these substitutions here. This is what you are going to see. Correct. Take R common. You get cos x cos theta plus sine x sine theta. Okay. Everybody by this time, you know this is your compound angle identity, which is cos x minus theta. Correct. So just put this R as under root a square plus b square. Okay. Put your theta as tan inverse b by a. Okay, that is something which you already did in the, that previous question. So that is why the previous question became root two cos x minus pi by four. Correct. So your cos x minus tan inverse b by a becomes c by under root of a square plus b square. Right. Now this is a place where you can now write this guy as cos of some angle alpha, right? And you can write the general solution to be this. So your x will become two n pi plus minus alpha plus tan inverse b by a, okay? N being some integer. So this is your final answer to this question. now you don't have to remember this result okay many people they tend to remember this also but i don't want you to put unnecessary burden on your you know memory because you have many other things to remember okay i think inorganic chemistry itself is going to take vast amount of your you know memory space <laughs> so uh, as a maths uh, formula i don't want you to remember this this you can you know solve in the run time also okay is this fine any questions here please note this down by the way again i am telling you you could have converted this to sin also and done it so instead of a as r cos theta you could have taken a as r sin theta also and b as r cos theta also and solve the same problem okay so cos and sin that depends upon options what options to take what op sorry what options are given so that you can decide which process or which method to take while solving it Right. Is it clear? Any questions here? Okay. Now, few pointers to be noted. All of you, all of you, please focus on this step. okay this step tells you that cos of some angle is c by under root of a square plus b square so from this step i can say for solution to exist for solution to exist this term c by under root of a square plus b square should actually be between minus 1 to 1 why because it is cos of something right cos of any angle no matter whatever is the angle is restricted between minus 1 to 1 right in other words c should be between negative under root a square plus b square okay in other words your mod c should be lesser than equal to under root a square plus b square so please make a note of this very important for solution to exist for solution to exist mod of c should be under root of should be lesser than equal to under root of a square plus b square that means while solving such an equation if you realize that oh my c mod c is not less than under root a square plus b square then straight away say there is no solution to that equation don't waste your time solving it are you getting what i am trying to say see for example 
if somebody says sin x plus cos x equal to 2 let's solve this equation okay so here see a value is 1 or whatever b value or a value whatever you want to call it doesn't make a difference so let's say this is your b value this is your a value and this is your c value do you realize that mod of 2 is not less than equal to under root 1 square plus 1 square Correct? Because mod 2, which is 2, is actually more than under root 2. So for such equation, there is no solution. Don't waste time solving it also. Don't waste even a single second solving it. We are not going to talk about any complex solutions. That is why, uh, you know, in the beginning itself, I told you, there should not be any solution which is making your function undefined or non-real in nature. Okay, no complex solutions. Even if the question setter doesn't mention, please understand it. Our solutions are always real in nature. We are not going to talk about complex solutions, uh, non-real solutions. Okay, unless until the question setter mentions it explicitly. Of course, in quadratic equation and all, they would not write it. But while solving such equations like trigonometric equations, algebraic equations, we always write the we always write the real solutions. Okay. If you want, I can put a real word over here for real solution to exist. That would make it more precise, right, Satya? <laughs> for real solution to exist, mod of C should be lesser than or equal to A squared. Now, this is very important because a lot of questions have been framed on this itself. Okay. We will take some questions uh, and then we'll take a break. I know there's a break time already. So just one question we'll take uh, and then we'll take a break. <sighs> okay, let's take this one. Find the general solution. Solve means find the general solution for this equation. So first of all, ask yourself, is this equation solvable? Will I get a real solution for this? Ask yourself. That means is mod C less than equal to under root of A square plus B square. Then only go forward. So if you compare this with a cos x plus b sin x equal to c, you realize that a square plus b square under root. So a square, so a is your, sorry, a is your root 3. So a square will be 3. Okay. Actually, it doesn't matter the order. b square is 1 under root. Is c lesser than equal to this? The answer is yes. Correct? The answer to this is yes. That means the solution exists. So real solution does exist. Okay, exist. Now let's go ahead and solve this. So what do I normally do? Uh, I follow the same procedure as what I discussed in the previous slide. I take root three as R cos theta and one, that is your coefficient of sin x as R sine theta. Square it and add it. 
squaring and adding gives you r square as 4 that means r is 2 take the ratio tan theta is 1 by root 3 so theta value is pi by 6 right so when you put it back when you put these two back in your given equation you get r cos theta cos x r sin theta sin x equal to root 2 which is nothing but r cos x minus theta equal to root 2 correct where r is 2 theta is pi by 6 right so this is a simple equation to deal with so cos pi x minus pi by 6 is 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 can be written as cos pi by 4 that means x minus pi by 6 is 2 n pi plus minus pi by 4 in short x is 2 n pi plus minus pi by 4 plus pi by 6 but normally when we write it we break it up and write it like this we write it as 2 n pi plus pi by 4 plus pi by 6 and then take a negative 2 n pi minus pi by 4 plus pi by 6 so this boils down to 2 n pi plus 5 pi by 12 and this boils down to 2 n pi minus pi by 12 okay so here is your final solution so your general solution will be 2n pi plus 5 pi by 12 or 2n pi minus pi by 12 and being integer is it fine any questions any concerns make sense okay so here we'll take a small break okay on the other side of the break i'll take one more question based on the same uh, type and then I will show you some other types as well. So let's take a break. Uh, right now, as per my laptop, it's 6.21 p.m. We'll meet exactly after 15 minutes break, which is 6.36 p.m. Okay. Uh, normally during the break, uh, even I take a break, so the camera and the mic will be turned off. The recording will be stopped. So you can go enjoy your break and come exactly at the same time back. Okay. See you on the other side of the break. Uh, so before we left for the break, we had taken the type A cos X plus B sin X equal to C type of a problem. Uh, I would take just one more question on the same and then uh, we will uh, go to the next type. So let's take this question. So let's take this question. Yeah. So this question says, if k cos x minus 3 sin x is equal to k plus 1, okay? If k cos x minus 3 sin x is equal to k plus 1 has real solutions, has real solutions, then which of the following option is correct option number a k has to be greater than or equal to 4 option b k has to be less than or equal to 4 option c k has to be between between 0 to 4 okay and option d k could be any real number Okay, so which option is the most appropriate option for this question? I'll put the poll on for you all. Okay, I'll put the poll on for all uh, on for you all. So please mark the most appropriate option for this question. I hope my writing is legible. A cos x. So k cos x minus 3 sin x is equal to k plus 1 has a real solution. Then k satisfies which interval?
a cos x minus 3 sin x equal to k plus 1 has real solutions then which is the most which is the most appropriate option which satisfies this okay vishal if anybody is not able to see the poll he or she can also put your response on the chat box Okay, Shlok. Very good. Three people have responded on the poll so far. okay satyam i can give one more minute so those who are trying hard please try to wrap this up in one minute it's actually less than 30 seconds question but still i am giving you around 2 minutes for this ah uh, no worries harshita uh, you can correct yourself on the chat okay you can mark you can tell me the option which you think is correct okay All right, so let's stop now. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Okay, I could see a mixed response. Uh, A, B, C have got two two options each. D has got one options. Okay, let's see which option is going to be the correct one. So as I already discussed with you, for a solution to exist. Okay, I'll rewrite the question. Rewrite the situation here. A cos x plus b sin x equal to c. For a solution to exist, mod c should be less than equal to under root of a square plus b square. Correct. So this is the condition for solution to exist. Okay. So for a real solution to exist, real solution to exist, this is the condition that we need to satisfy. Okay. So here our a is k. b is minus 3 so a square plus b square under root this should be less than mod c mod c is mod k plus 1 now you can square both the sides if you square both the sides this is what you are going to see which is as good as saying k square plus 2k plus 1 is less than equal to k square plus 9 k square k square gone so 2k is less than equal to 8 so k is less than equal to 4 which means option number b is correct okay so option b is the right option is it fine any questions any concerns any questions any concerns okay next type that we are going to discuss now uh before i move on any any questions anybody Oh no problem, Ashita. Okay, next type that we are going to take is the type where it involves a homogeneous function. So it's a homogeneous. So the equation involves a homogeneous function in sine x and cos x. Okay, 
let me give you an example for it so equations involving homogeneous function in sin x and cos x let's take an example <clears throat> let's take this question okay if you see this question this term is actually a homogeneous expression in sin x and cos x now what is the meaning of homogeneous expression or homogeneous function in sin x and cos x if you look at each one of these terms each term will be having the same power effectively on sin or cos for example here there is a power of 2 here one sin and one cos is multiplied so again the effective power is 2 here also cos square x so effective power is 2 so you can see that there is a uniformity in the power of sin or cos now many people say sir right side the power is 0 so how is it homogeneous see even if it is 4 you can actually write it as 4 sin square plus cos square so the power is what is the meaning of the word homogeneous homogeneous means there is a uniformity i mean i'm sure in chemistry would have you would have studied homogeneous mixtures right so the the quantity of the solute and the solvent is same at any in any part of the mixture right in the same way in any part of the equation you will see that the effective power on each of these terms is actually uniform or homogeneous that is why it is called homogeneous function uh, that is why this you know these uh, expressions are called homogeneous functions in sin and cos right so how do we solve such kind of a question so in order to solve this question we normally convert this to a quadratic in terms of tan okay so what do we do here let us first uh, you know write this expression once again okay so here what i'm going to do all of you please pay attention uh first i'm going to bring these two terms to the left side okay let's see what happens because of that it makes it sin square x and this becomes i think 12 cos square x okay so what do we do now we divide by cos square x so that it becomes a quadratic in tan so divide by cos square x so when you do that the first term will become tan square x second term will become 7 tan x third term will be as good as a 12 right so this happens to become a quadratic in tan quadratic in tan correct so is it factorizable you can you can call tan x to be y for the time being if you want so it's y square minus 7y plus 12 equal to 0 right it is factorizable i'm sure everybody knows how to factorize this y minus 3 y minus 4 so that means y could be 3 or y could be 4 which means tan x could be 3 oh sorry tan x could be 3 or tan x could be 4 right so if tan x is 3 what is the general solution if tan x is 3 what is the general solution x will be equal to n pi tell me complete it n pi plus tan inverse 3 now there is no such angle that is known to us for which tan is 3 at least it is not one of the You know, zero, forty-five, sixty, thirty, ninety, etc. So you can leave your answer like that. Okay, n being an integer. And if you take tan x as four, if you take tan x as four, then the general solution would be x equal to n pi plus tan inverse four. Got the point? So these two will become your answer. Over. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Please do highlight. is it fine all right so i think you will be able to manage any such question so if let's say there was a power of 3 3 3 3 everywhere let's say there was a homogeneous uh, you know function of degree 3 involved everywhere you divide by cos cube get a cubic in tan and in most of the cases that will be factorizable don't worry you will not get a cubic equation which is beyond your factorization uh, you can say capabilities you will always get i uh, know equations which are factorizable so there's no point wasting time doing more and more questions so let us quickly move on to next type next type is the equation which involves extreme values 
okay so equations involving extreme values extreme values now what do i mean by this topic name Ex equations involving extreme values let me give an example let me give an example let's say i want to solve this question now read this question very very carefully it involves three variables x y and z okay so you would be wondering sir one equation three variables how 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 are we supposed to solve it because there is only one equation and there are three variables x y z so how do i solve all these three variables or how do i find the general solutions to these three variables now here everybody take a minute and you know analyze this equation deeply you will get the answer to this question so the question that is coming in your mind you will yourself find answer to that has anybody found the breakthrough has anybody found the breakthrough no no breakthrough yet okay uh, see we all know that sin x is between minus 1 to 1 right so can i say sin square x will be between 0 to 1 correct same goes with cos y also cos y also lies between minus 1 to 1 so cos square y will lie between 0 to 1 correct and everybody please pay attention seek lies between now seek is an uh, angle which lies between minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity so seek square z will always be greater than or equal to 1 please understand this so secant square of any angle no matter whatever is the angle that will always be a value which is greater than or equal to 1 okay now all of you please pay attention this guy is always less than or equal to 1 this guy is also less than or equal to 1 so overall this whole thing is less than or equal to 2 yes or no this fellow will be greater than 1 so overall this fellow is greater than or equal to 2 so your left hand side is less than or equal to 2 while your right hand side is greater than or equal to 2 and you're equating it so when do you think the equality will hold true between left hand side and right hand side see again i'm repeating the scenario your left hand side will always be less than or equal to 2 your right hand side will always be greater than or equal to 2 and you're equating it so when do you think they will agree with each other right when both of them are equal to 2 absolutely right so your LHS and right hand side both should be equal to two each. Then only the equality will true will be true. So for each to be two, that means sine square x should also be one, cos square y should also be one, and sec square z should also be one. Then only it will be true. Correct. Now sine square x is equal to one is as good as sine square pi by two. So what is the general solution? N pi plus minus pi by two. Is it correct? This is as good as saying uh, cos square y is equal to cos square 0, right? That means this is equal to n pi plus minus 0, which is as good as n pi only. Yes or no? This also is as good as saying cos square z is equal to 1. So z is also equal to n pi. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? So see, since it was an extreme value scenario, you could find three variables just from one equation itself. Any questions, any concerns? <laughs> exactly. And let me tell you, Harshita and others, that such type of scenario is seen very commonly in competitive exams, especially KVPY is known to you know, put such scenarios. 
we'll take one more of the same kind don't worry we'll take one more <clears throat> Okay, everybody has copied. Any questions, any concerns? Fine, good. Okay, let's take the next question based on the same type, extreme value scenario type. kept a question of that type. Okay, nevertheless, I'll just put a question from my side. Let's take this question. Root 2 Root 2 to the power of, or uh, let, let's take this one, sorry, uh, sin x plus cos x to the power of 1 plus sin 2x is equal to 2. Fine. Find the general solution for this equation. Find the general solution for this equation. sin x plus cos x whole raised to the power of 1 plus sin 2x is equal to 2. Find the general solution for this equation. Okay, Vishal, that was quick. Yes, anybody? Okay, Satyam, very good. Okay, Ashita.
Okay, let's discuss it. See, all of us know that sin x plus cos x is a value which is going to lie between. Now let, let's call this as a c. Okay, let's say I call this as a c. Now we all know that the c value is something which is between under root of a square plus b square, right? Which means mod c is less than root two. In short, your c has to be between negative root two to root two. Okay. In short, this guy that is sin x plus cos x will be some value which is going to lie between root two to negative root two. Right? Agreed, everybody. Now, everybody, please pay attention. This fellow is a value which will lie between minus one to one. Right? Now. I have a proposition over here. The proposition is in order to become a two, it can only happen when your sin x plus cos x either becomes a plus root two or a minus root two, and the power of it becomes a two, which means sin x sin two x becomes a one. So only when these two conditions are simultaneously met. When these two conditions are simultaneously met, simultaneously met, then only this equation is going to get satisfied. Yes or no? Yes or no? Agreed? Right? So now this could be clubbed as a single equation saying sin x plus cos x, the whole square is equal to root two square because it will cover both the scenarios plus minus root two, which means sin square x plus cos square x plus two sin x cos x is equal to two, which means sin one plus sin two x is equal to two which means sin 2x equal to 1. So both of them now actually speak the same thing, right? So you don't have to worry about two different equations. It is actually both are same equations. So all you need to do is solve this equation. Okay. And this is as good as saying sin pi by 2. So your 2x will be nothing but n pi plus minus, sorry, n pi plus minus 1 to the power n pi by 2. So your x will be n pi by 2 plus minus 1 to the power n pi by 4. So this is going to be your general solution to this question. Is it fine? Let me check how many of you got this right. Hey, yo, people have missed out n pi by 2, I believe. Am I right? Satyam, Vishal. Did you miss out that two down here? Okay. Yeah, both Satyam, I think, uh, and Vishal missed it out. Is it fine? Any questions? Any questions, any concerns, please highlight. So you have to analyze the situations. Many a times we just start solving it blindly. So uh, ask yourself, is this equation going to be satisfied for some extreme conditions, right? Because many a times such questions are difficult to solve on its face value. On its face value, it looks very difficult question, right? So just ask yourself, is it like the question setter has put an extreme situation in order to make this, uh, you know, uh, equation satisfied and that will come with practice as you practice more and more questions you'll become more and more refined in identifying such cases getting my point okay next are those equations uh, so another type so those equations which involve all the type of trigonometric function, sine, cos, tan, everything is involved. Okay. So how to solve such kind of a scenario? Again, I will uh, like to uh, solve this by an example. 
Okay, let's take an example. Uh, I think I could take this question. Now, first of all, I would like to give you a fair chance to, uh, you know, solve this question. I would not like to jump on the theory straight away because that will kill the, uh, you know, uh, learning part from your side. So first of all, I would request everybody take a minute, take a two minutes. Okay. No problem. And try to see how are you going to solve this question? Everybody, please note that this into this plus two is also there. Okay. Don't, don't ignore this plus two. Don't start comparing them to zero, zero. Uh, ignoring that too. Okay. So there is a two there. See how, how you can solve this question. So ideally you can see this is a function of all these sine, cos, tan, etc. So how can we go ahead and solve such a problem? Normally what happens if there is a sine and a cos sitting there, uh, we try to, you know, square both sides or we try to, you know, write a harmonic form for it. Like how I taught you using R cos theta and R sine theta. Many times we try to, uh, you know, convert one in terms of the other. If one is squared up, okay. By using our trigonometric identities, but when everything is involved, like sine, cos, tan, as you can see, all the three functions are involved over here in some or the other form. Then how do you manage such scenarios? Any idea? Anybody is actually making an attempt to solve it or have you got, you know, uh, stuck somewhere? Okay. Anyways, so let me bail you out of that situation. See, when your function involves, you know, mixed trigonometric function like this, there is actually a method by which you can write this entire equation as a single trigonometric function. And that root is by converting them into half angles of tan. Yes. So the root is converting them to half angles of tan. See how sin X can be written in terms of half angles of tan like this. I hope all of you recall your trigonometric identities. Cos X can also be written in half angles of tan. Something like this. Okay. And of course, tan x itself can also be written as half angles of tan, right? So what is the benefit of converting it to half angles of tan is that you get a uniformity in, you get a uniform expression in terms of tan x by two. So you can take tan x by two as a Y and, you know, solve, solve it like just any other polynomial equation, right? So that is the benefit of this. So this proves this, this basically method proves to be very, very useful when it comes to such mixed type of trigonometric equations. Are you getting my point? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this and I'm going to also use tan X by two as a, let's say, you know, you can call it as a Y or something. Okay. So let's try to solve it. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use these three formulas in this left-hand side. So cos X, cos X will be one minus Y square by one plus Y square minus sine X, sine X is two Y by one plus Y square. 
see here look at the formulas over here which i have written in yellow i'm just calling tan x by 2 as a y and i'm using it over here this becomes 2 into 2y by uh, 1 minus y square and this is 1 by this 1 by this will be 1 plus y square by 1 minus y square okay plus 2 equal to 0 let's try to further simplify this let's try to further simplify this so this is going to become if i'm not mistaken 1 minus y square minus 2y Mm, this is going to be four y by one plus y square, and down in the denominator I'll have one plus y square, one minus y square, which is one minus y to the power four. Correct? Any questions? Any questions? Let's take the LCM and uh, yeah, let's take the LCM. And send the denominator to the other side. Fine. So let us simplify this. So as per me, I I believe that uh, y to the power four will be the maximum power that will be occurring because I can see a minus y to the power four here and minus two y to the power four from here, right? So that will become minus three uh, y to the power four. Please correct me if I am missing out anything. Correct. So y to the power minus y to the power four minus two y to the power four will give you minus three y to the power four. Okay. Will there be any y cube term? Check. Yes, so I think y to the power three term will be coming from these two, correct, and these two. So if I'm not mistaken, that will give you minus six y cube. Am I right? Okay. What about y square term? Will I be getting y square term? Yes, I'll be getting y square term from here, from here, from here. So that will be giving you minus eight y square because minus y square. And plus y square, that will get cancelled with each other, and you'll be only left with minus eight y square. Sorry, I am just erasing this part. I'm rewriting it. Don't worry. Yeah. What will be the y terms? Y terms will come when this multiplies with this. This multiplies with this. Okay, so that will give you, if I'm not mistaken, plus two y. Correct. Plus two y, and constant terms will be I think just coming from here two, and this three. So three will be your constant term. If you want, you can multiply throughout with a negative sign also, and just write it like this. Now this is a biquadratic in y. How do I solve it? See, since you have now this is again a trick which I am giving you. Okay, many times it works. Since you have put tan x by two as a y, think of those values of y which can be obtained from tan of certain known angles. Like y could be zero, in fact, but in this case zero will not work. It could be one by root three. It could be minus one by root three. It could be root three. It could be minus root three. So these are some generic values that we know for tan. Okay. Now this is just a You can say starting point for you. I'm not claiming that always one of them will work. No, I'm, don't get me wrong here. But as a person who is, let's say, you know, smart, he would try to put values which are obtained from tan of some angles, like one minus one, one by root three minus one by root three, root three minus one by root three. But I don't claim that these values will always work. Okay. See, you cannot solve a biquadratic equation of this nature like your, you know, using your quadratic equation formula, right? You need to do some guessworks. Okay. So my first guesswork will be: Does one satisfy it? Let's check. One will not satisfy it. The reason being, 
if one is to satisfy the coefficient should add up to give you zero which is not happening i hope all of you know the divisibility uh if one is a root or one is a, a root of this equation all the coefficient should add up to give you zero right that is not happening even minus one is not a root because if minus one is a root the even ones should add up to give you the odd ones sorry the odd ones which is not happening now let's check one by root three does it work let's check so if i put one by root three this will become one by root three to the power four which is one by three square this will become six by three root three this will become eight by three this will become minus two by root three minus three let's check whether it is working so i think this is two and this whole thing whole thing will get cancelled this is one by three plus eight by three minus three oh wonderful this works okay so that means that means y could be one by root three right now check for check for minus one by root three so minus one by root three let me just drag it up oh there's no place down yeah so let me put minus 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3 will give you 3 into 1 by 3 uh minus 6 by 3 root 3 plus 8 by 3 plus 2 by root 3 minus 3 again these two get cancelled okay and again this will become 1 by 3 plus 8 by 3 minus 3 yeah that also satisfies so y could be minus 1 by root 3 as well okay so out of four roots two roots i have already found out right so let us find out the remaining two roots okay but for finding remaining two roots i will use a simple strategy uh since y minus uh, y could be plus minus root 3 it means y square is 1 by 3 that means 3 y square minus 1 is a factor isn't it so you can you can factorize that term which was uh, this whole thing 3y to the power 4 plus 6y cube let me write it down first so 3y to the power 4 plus 6y cube i have to drag and copy it uh, plus 8y square minus 2y plus 8y square minus 2y minus 3 yeah so let us factorize this so one of the factors is already this so let us guess what is the other factor by the way other factor is a going to be a quadratic right because overall the degree has to be 4 okay so two degree is already there so this has to be quadratic now see how how you know uh, in a very short way i am going to get these coefficient see there is a 3y to the power 4 and there is a 3y to the power sorry 3y to the power 2 and there is 3y to the power 4 that means here y square should come correct yes or no there is a minus 3 here and there is a minus 1 over here so plus 3 should come correct and in middle there will be some term which is let's say ky all i need to do is find my k first of all so in order to find k you can compare the coefficient of let's say y square on both the sides or y on both the sides anything is fine in fact y cube also can be compared so let's compare the coefficient of compare coefficient of y cube on both sides see by the way you can do a long division method also i'm not denying it i'm not stopping anybody from doing long division method okay you long divide this term by 3y square minus 1 get your answer that is also fine so if you compare the coefficient of y cube on the left side you get 6 on the right side you will get 3k okay i don't think so there is any other term that will contribute to a y cube 3k so k is 2 that means this term is nothing but 2y now what are you trying to solve we are trying to solve this equal to 0 so if you are trying to solve this equal to 0 it will result into only this being 0 because this cannot be 0 this fellow cannot be 0 Right, because it is y plus one the whole square plus two. This cannot be zero. So the only solution possible is what we obtained. So you must be thinking, "Are you, sir? We wasted time, you know, realizing that there is no further route. No, no, it's not a waste of time. Okay, 
please uh, realize that it's better to be safe and get that four marks completely in your JE main rather than taking this half hazard chances. Okay. So be safe. Don't take chances. So your tan X by two is going to be one by root three. Let's write down the general solution. So tan X by two is tan pi by six. So X by two is N pi plus pi by six. So X is two N pi plus pi by three. Okay. N being a integer. Next uh, tan X by two is equal to minus one by root three. So without much waste of time, I will write it as two N pi minus pi by three. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So these two are your solution to this question. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? So keep this also in your mind. See, I'm, I'm, I'm just exposing you to different types of questions, dear students. Okay. You should be prepared. You should have all the weapons in your armory. You never know which weapon will help you when. Are you getting my point? So as a, you know, as a coach, I would like to show you all the facets that you can get under this particular, you know, chapter. So you should be ready that, okay, if this comes, maybe this option can also be exercised or this way, this method can also be used. Getting my point. Okay. Any questions, any concerns, uh, please do let us know. All right. Now let me expose you to more such uh, situations. Uh, so I would like everybody to work out this question. Now, before you jump into solving the question, okay, just see whether you can convert it to a polynomial equation with some smart substitution somewhere. See, this is what, see, JE is not about conventional methods. Oh, I know this type of question that is, that is, you know, uh, you know, every question of that type I will solve by using, you know, a conventional method. No, first you need to analyze, see whether there are some loopholes or there are some uh, you can say weak points in the question, which you can leverage. Okay. For example, in this question, I see a sign term raised to a very heavy power 10. Okay. I see a cost term also raised to a very heavy power and I see a cost to X. Okay. Raised to a power of four. Is there any way by which we can write them in terms of a single expression? And of course, not involving a very high polynomial power. Can I do something like that? Any, any process that comes in your mind? Anybody, any process that is coming in your mind? Cos 2x is there, sin x and cos x is also there. Can you do something with it? Okay. See, many of you would be thinking of writing sin square x as a t. Correct? Because if you write sin square x as a t or a y, whatever, then cos to the power of, of course, uh, sin to the power 10 could be written as y to the power 5. Okay. And even cos to the power 10x, you can write it as one minus, now all of you pay, please pay attention, one minus sine square x to the power five, which is as good as one minus y to the power five. Yes or no? And not only that, cos two x is actually one minus two sine square x. So that also you can write it as one minus two y, isn't it? 
So this to the power four can be written as this to the power of four. Okay. So of course you can write this whole thing as y to the power five, one minus y to the power five, equal to twenty nine by sixteen, one minus two y to the power four. Okay. Yes or no? Correct. This is one way to do it. But I will tell you a more smarter way. Okay. Of course, you will simplify. You will get a fifth degree equation. By the way, it will not be a fifth degree equation. It will be a fourth degree equation because y to the power five, and when you expand it here, you'll get minus y to the power five. That will get cancelled off. Okay. But I'll tell you a simpler way to solve this question. This is one way. Second way is I know that sine square x. Is one minus cos two x by two, and similarly cos square x is one plus cos two x by two. Correct? Yes or no? So what I'm going to do sine to the power ten x. I'm going to write one minus cos two x by two to the power of five, and cos to the power ten x. I will write it as one plus cos two x by two to the power of five. Okay. So as a result, what I can do is. I can take take cos two x as a y. So your left hand side will become one minus y by two to the power five. One plus y by two to the power five. That will be your left hand side. Correct. Right hand side will be twenty nine by sixteen. Y to the power of four. Yes or no? Now this would be a simpler one to deal with. Let me tell you why. Let's multiply with two to the power five throughout. So multiply with two to the power five throughout. This will become fifty-eight by two to the power four, right? Because two to the power five is thirty-two. Now this term that you see, you will realize that most of the terms will start getting cancelled here. Let me write this uh, separately for you. Let me first write one minus y to the power five. Now, please remember binomial theorem. A little bit binomial theorem we already know from our bridge course days. But if you expand it by binomial theorem, this is what you are going to see. Correct. Similarly, this term is going to be one minus five y plus ten y square minus ten y cube. <coughs> Plus five y to the power four minus y to the power five. So when you add them, when you add them, the left hand side term is going to give you two times. See, this two will get cancelled. This two will get cancelled. This two will get cancelled. So that will give you two times one plus ten y square five y to the power four. Okay. So this has a add on advantage. That you will end up getting, you will end up getting a y quadratic, but that y quadratic will always have even power on y. So that that is basically beneficial to us. How it is beneficial to us? Let me first explain this first of all. So this will become twenty four y to the power four minus ten y square minus one equal to zero. So if you take y square as a k, then this just becomes a quadratic, isn't it? Yes or no? And I think this will be factorizable. You can factorize it as minus twelve k plus two k minus one equal to zero. Uh, let's take twelve k common, two k minus one. Okay. So twelve k plus one times two k minus one equal to zero. Yes or no? Is it fine? Any question? Any concerns that you have till this stage? All good. Check it out. And let me know if I missed out anything or any concerns that you have. Okay, so this is as good as saying 
12 y square plus 1 times 2 y square minus 1 is 0 remember this cannot be 0 that means only possibility is this is 0 which means y is equal to plus minus 1 by root 2 which means cos 2x is plus minus 1 by root 2 right now i am sure you can easily write down the solution for this let me write it down here yeah this is as good as saying cos square 2x is equal to half okay half is cos 5 by 4 whole square okay so that means 2x is equal to n pi plus minus pi by 4 so x is equal to n pi plus minus pi by 8 and belonging to integer so this is going to be your answer to this question is it fine any questions any concerns please do highlight okay so we'll stop here by the way there are few more types of questions uh, that are that are left to be covered and of course we have not yet started with trigonometric inequations so in our next class that we meet we are going to oh yeah in our next class that we are going to uh, you know take up we are going to uh, complete that part i think one hour of class is more required to finish off this and then i will be starting with properties of triangles as i told you next class properties of triangles will be taken up okay so uh, so please note down this is your final answer n pi by 2 plus minus pi by 8 <laughs> all right thank you class bye bye take care stay safe Good night. See you in the next session. Bye-bye. Take care.